All right, everyone, welcome back to the land of Kev. I am your host and the author. My name is Jeffrey Drum. Thank you all so much for joining me again. All right, everyone, welcome back. This is episode 118, and today I will be explaining the function of the Osirion in Abydos, and it might be quite different than what you may be expecting. If this is the type of content you're interested in regarding the ancient technology of a lost civilization, utilizing physics and chemistry, and the function of the Egyptian pyramids and other ancient structures from across the world, this is the channel for you. So please subscribe to The Land of Chem here on YouTube. Don't forget, click that little notification bell so you do not miss the new episodes that premiere twice per week. Please like, comment, and stay tuned if you want to help support the channel and get access to exclusive research and unreleased footage, check out the members only channel, link in the video description below. If you wanna pick up a copy of the book or grab some Land of Chem merch, check out thelandofchem.com. If you wanna follow me on Instagram, my handle is at thelandofchem. Also don't forget, after you finish watching this video, please go subscribe to our two new channels here on YouTube, Egyptian Trash Cats for all you cat lovers out there and Egypt Eats for food reviews. Ladies and gentlemen, as always, thank you all so much for the support. I think that's it for the intro. So without further ado, let's get right to it. All right, everyone, here we go with tonight's episode. And to begin, I will be your conductor as I escort you along the same path as so many initiates that have come before you as we descend into the subterranean underworld, which has been symbolically recreated within the Osirion to represent the abode of Osiris and the realm of creation. So as the candidate began the ritual, he was escorted through the long entrance tunnel here in complete darkness into the underground structure. And as we walk through this process, I want you to visualize what this would have been like for those who entered this ancient mystery school. Walking through, this long entrance tunnel here until they reached the first chamber, which you can see here, which would have been illuminated by lamp or candlelight with the walls decorated with esoteric glyphs and symbols. As you can see here, from the Asita Project 2013 expedition to the Osirion, the images of Osiris and Horus, surrounded by these alchemical glyphs, the deepest esoteric meaning of which were then explained to the candidate, with the residence of the voice of the conductor and the ultrasound emanating from the central chamber being intensified within the ancillary acoustic amplification chamber, heightening the exhilarating experience for the candidate. The initiate was then led even deeper into the structure, further underground through the next descending tunnel here, into the dwelling place of Osiris, with the inner chamber of the temple being designed to emulate the primordial mound, surrounded by water, through which all creation has arisen. And as it says in the Christian Bible, the Spirit of God moved across the surface of the water. This too was implemented into the function of this temple of initiation. As the red granite pillars and beams within this structure interacted with the electric fields coursing through these dielectric materials to produce profound ultrasonic vibrations within the chamber, eliciting not only a mental, but physical and biological transformation within the candidate. So as he stood here on the threshold of the inner sanctum, it was revealed to the candidate that no one could cross onto the central primordial mound without undergoing a ritual of purification by water, known in the ancient times as lustration, and only those who had been submerged and cleansed in the primordial waters could proceed through the rest of the initiation ritual. And as you can see here, there is absolutely no way to cross onto the central island without first being submerged 
into the very special water source upon which this temple was constructed. And I can assure you, they selected the precise location for the construction of the Osirion very meticulously, as we will get to in just a moment. So the initiate would then plunge into the water off of this ledge here, fully immersing himself in the transformative waters that filled the inner reservoir. And after this ritual purification, he could then ascend the stairway onto the central island where the remaining ritual of death and resurrection of Osiris was then conferred. And this central island is surrounded by 17 individual cells, which I propose were also intended for illumination of the temple and acoustic amplification. So this entire central structure would have been completely darkened, but surrounded by glowing lights and reverberating sound, recreating the primordial sound of creation, the voice of God moving through the celestial realm. This would have been a truly mind altering and life changing experience. Now you may be asking yourself, why 17 cells? Well, in the ancient Egyptian mythology, Osiris was killed on the 17th day of the month known as Aether, spelled A-T-H-Y-R which was the third month of the ancient Egyptian calendar. And I suspect that at the beginning of the initiation ritual, the chamber was completely dark. And as the ceremony proceeded, each chamber was illuminated one by one until finally all 17 chambers were glowing with light. And at this moment, the candidate would then receive the right of symbolic death and resurrection on the 17th day. Most likely in a sarcophagus that was housed here in the central recess. And I will be doing a full episode coming up soon regarding the number 17 and the esoteric symbolism of Osiris, as I was shocked to see how deeply this numerology has permeated later cultures. But for now, I will say this, there is another ritual that occurs on the 17th day of the third month of our modern calendar that is directly connected to Osiris, known as the Green Man. None other than St. Patrick's Day on March 17th. And just imagine what this would have been like to participate in this ancient ritual of purification by water, death, and rebirth within one of the most magnificent ancient structures that was ever constructed in Egypt, most likely terrified and exhilarated by the overwhelmingly intense events of this ritual, rising up from the water, ascending the stairs, and stepping onto this central platform. With the inner island completely in darkness, surrounded by glowing lights within the 17 cells. The chamber itself permeated with electric fields and echoing reverberating ultrasound, initiating a biochemical transformation within the candidate that affected not only his consciousness, but also his physical body. And yes, not all of these structures were created for manufacturing industrial scale chemicals like ammonia or sulfuric acid, but they were all intended to produce alchemical transformations. In this case, the biochemical ascension of the candidate being initiated into the mystery school or cult of Osiris. And this temple was designed for the practitioners of this ancient ritual to interact with the water source that is directly located below the Osirion. Being submerged in this water is an inescapable function of interacting with this structure, demonstrating its intentional design as a temple of initiation, purification, and healing. And the location for the Osirion was intentionally selected and its construction executed in such a manner 
that it taps directly into this very ancient, very unique source of water, which has properties of its own that we are only beginning to understand. And this is exactly the intention of the Osirion 7 mission to Abydos that I presented in episode 111 to discover not only the source of this water, but to better understand its unique properties. They even state here, the temple is unusual in the way that it was built to interact with groundwater, with their mission objectives being to investigate the source of the water, understand and conceptualize the flow direction and flow regime in the area, determine how the water gets into the western recess on the central island, and to investigate the age of this groundwater source. And they know that this water is not from the Nile River. It is a completely independent, extremely ancient source located directly below the structure. The question is, how did the builders of the Osirion know about this unique source of water? And what did they know about the transformative healing properties of this water that we don't? Well, this may all come to light soon as the Osirion 7 mission is investigating the water pressure, the water temperature, the depth, its actual conductivity, its specific conductivity, the salinity, dissolved solids, the resistivity, and its density. And they have already released some fascinating results showing that this is no ordinary water source. As you can see here in this graph, showing the specific conductivity of the water source within the Osirion. So this subterranean temple at the Osirion was capped with a dome-like structure. And I would propose that this originally featured an obelisk structure at the top, or the underground structure was connected into another system such as the adjacent above ground temple that distributed the electric field from lightning strikes directly into the dielectric stone materials of the Osirion, which had two effects. First, the electric field passing through the red granite will induce the inverse piezoelectric effect within the quartz crystal to produce ultrasonic vibrations that resonated throughout the structure during this ancient ritual of purification, death, and resurrection, producing transformative biochemical effects in the physical body of the candidate. These electric fields would have also interacted with the water inside of the Osirion, producing a phenomenon known as structured water. And as you can see here, I will quote, Compared with other liquids, water is very sensitive to an electric field. The field strongly polarizes the water, lining up the charges in the molecules. In the June 15th Physical Review Letters, researchers use a new calculation scheme to explain this large electric response. The results shed light on how water polarizes at short distances, the range relevant for the charged pieces of a protein molecule tightly packed among water molecules in biological cells. And here at the bottom, if you apply an electric field to water, you expect the molecules to align their dipoles along the field lines. On average, like so many compass needles aligning in Earth's magnetic field. And I will now put in a clip so you can see exactly what happens to water when activated in an electric field. So to summarize, the Osirion is an underground electric field activated inverse piezoelectric acoustic resonance temple 
that taps into an extremely ancient and powerfully transformative source of water that was designed to represent the abode of Osiris, the primordial mound and waters from which all creation arose, in which the initiatory ritual of purification, death, and resurrection was conferred on candidates, being initiated into the ancient mystery school or cult of Osiris. During this process, the initiate would undergo not only transformations within his consciousness that led to an ascended state of awareness, but also biochemical purification, regeneration, and healing, resulting from the interaction with the water and ultrasonic vibrations within this temple. All right, everyone, that is it for today's video. This was episode 118, The Function of the Osirion. I really hope you enjoyed today's video and in this week's Sunday site visit, an investigation of the satellite pyramids on the Giza Plateau. This is an episode you do not want to miss. So if you haven't already, please subscribe to the Land of Chem here on YouTube. If you're interested in the ancient technology of a lost civilization utilizing chemistry and physics and the function of the Egyptian pyramids and other ancient structures from across the world. If you want to help support the channel, just check out the Land of Chem members only section or thelandofchem.com if you want to pick up a copy of the book or grab some merch. If you want to follow me on Instagram, my handle is at the Land of Chem. Also, don't forget, please go subscribe to our two new channels here on YouTube, Egyptian Trash Cats for all you cat lovers out there, and Egypt Eats for food reviews from all of the fantastic restaurants that we visited on our expeditions across the world. Ladies and gentlemen, as always, thank you all so much for the support. I think that's it for today's episodes. I will see you next time. Yo, are you still watching this? Please subscribe to the Land of Chem here on YouTube and click that little notification button. New videos coming out every single week. And check out this other episode. Come on, do it. Do it now.